All right, buckle up, everybody, because today we are diving deep into a cosmic event so powerful it makes supernovae look like well, sparklers. Yeah, we're talking neutron stars colliding. Exactly. It's going to take us all the way from like a cosmic inferno to the birth of a black hole. And not just any black hole. This one's the smallest one we've ever seen. Yeah, it's a wild ride. And all of the details are straight from a brand new article um, from the University of Copenhagen's Faculty of Science. It was published just this week. Hot off the presses. So, so imagine this. Two ultra-dense neutron stars. They're the remnants of massive stars that have already gone supernova. Right. They're hurtling towards each other at, like, unbelievable speeds. It's a collision of epic proportions. You're yeah. talking about releasing energy that literally warps the fabric of space-time itself. Okay, wait. Warps space-time. That's a phrase I hear all the time. But, like, what does it actually mean? So imagine space-time is like a giant trampoline. Right. Okay. And if you place a bowling ball on it, it creates this dip. That's what massive objects like stars and planets, that's what they do to space-time. Now imagine two bowling balls colliding on that trampoline. Oh, wow. The energy from that collision, it would create these ripples that spread outwards, distorting, you know, the fabric of the trampoline itself. And that's essentially what's happening when neutron stars collide. Mm -hmm. The energy is so intense that it creates these things called gravitational waves, which are these ripples in space-time that travel across the universe. So it's not just about the explosion itself, it's about like the fundamental forces of the universe just being like shaken to their core. Exactly. And from that cosmic clash, what we get is a really spectacular light show called a kilonova. Kilonova, even the name sounds powerful. It is. Imagine the brilliance of hundreds of millions of suns all concentrated into this single awe-inspiring event. Wow. But here's the thing. It's not just about the light show. Uh, the kilonova is this crucible, this cosmic forge, where heavy elements are created through this process called radioactive decay. Hold on. So you're saying that the elements that make up, well, everything around us could have been born in events like this. That's the leading theory. Yeah. And this particular kilonova gives us this incredible opportunity to study how it happens. Okay. Now that we kind of have grasped the sheer power of this event, can we zoom in on like what's happening inside the kilonova? Like yeah. what's the story there? It's a story of creation from chaos, yeah. right? So picture this, the kilonova starts as this scorching hot soup of plasma. It's so hot that electrons are stripped away from their atoms. Everything's just a chaotic mix of these charged particles. You know, that sounds a lot like what we imagined the early universe was like just after the Big Bang. Yeah, it's a great analogy. Yeah. And just like the early universe cooled and expanded, so does the kilonova. As it cools, those free-floating electrons, they start to reconnect with atomic nuclei, forming, you know, the very first atoms. Okay. And this process of atom formation, it's crucial, right? Right. Because it sets the stage for something even more remarkable, the creation of heavy elements. Exactly. You got it. And this is where those ultra-dense neutron stars we started with, they come back into play. When they collide, they release this flood of neutrons. And these neutrons, they can be captured by lighter atomic nuclei, building them up into heavier elements. Think strontium and yttrium, which we actually detected in this kilonova. Hey, strontium and yttrium, why are those two so important? They're significant because they're relatively easy for us to detect from Earth. Their presence really strongly hints that a lot of heavier elements, like gold and platinum, were likely created even if we can't see them directly, at least not yet. So it's like finding a cosmic fingerprint, right? Mm -hmm. That tells us what else might be there. Exactly. And this is where things get really exciting because unlike that slow and steady fusion process that happens inside stars, this is rapid fire, a bombardment of neutrons, allowing these elements to jump up the periodic table in a flash. This, this is blowing my mind. So you're telling me that the gold in my ring could have come from a neutron star collision, like billions of years ago. It's a very tantalizing possibility, isn't it? But there's another mind-bending aspect to all of this. Okay, I'm all ears. Tell me more. Well, because the kilonova is so vast and the light from different parts of it reaches us at different times, it's like we're watching this cosmic replay of atom formation in slow motion. So we're actually seeing a time delay built into the event itself because of how long it takes for light to travel. Oh, That's wild. Precisely. And by comparing the light that's coming from the far side of the kilonova where atoms haven't formed yet to the light from closer regions where atoms have already formed, we can piece together the entire process of element creation. It's like having a front row seat to like one of the most fundamental processes in the universe. Yeah, you could say that. I have to admit, though, my brain is starting to hurt a little bit. 
I understand. It's a lot to take in. But this is just the beginning. We still have the birth of a black hole to unravel. Okay, so we've got this incredible Kilanova, you know, forging these heavy elements in this cosmic flash. But you mentioned a black hole, too. How does that fit into all of this? Yeah, so that's where the story takes another fascinating turn. Remember, we started with these two incredibly massive neutron stars, right? Right. When they collide and merge their combined mass, it can exceed this, this critical threshold. And that threshold is what, like, tips the scales towards black hole formation? Exactly. It's kind of like adding, you know, one too many coins to a piggy bank and then it bursts open. Okay. Except in this case, instead of kinds, it's matter being compressed beyond the point of no return, collapsing into this infinitely dense singularity. Okay, now I'm really feeling like I'm on the bridge of the Starship Enterprise here. We're talking about matter being squeezed so tightly that it just, it literally disappears from like our known universe. Yeah, it is pretty mind blowing. And what's even more fascinating is that the properties of the Kilanova itself can actually tell us a lot about the black hole that formed. So it's like the Kilanova is a cosmic messenger, right? Yeah. Carrying clues about the black hole's birth. That's a great way to put it. For example, the brightness and duration of the Kilanova, you know, that can give us hints about the mass of the black hole. A more massive black hole, it would have gobbled up more matter during the merger, leaving less material to actually power the Kilanova. So a dimmer, like shorter Kilanova, that might actually point to a bigger black hole lurking in the aftermath. Exactly. And the composition of the Kilanova, the elements that we actually detect in its afterglow, that can also provide clues about, like, the dynamics of the merger and the conditions under which the black hole was born. It's amazing how scientists can piece together this kind of information from, you know, light that has traveled billions of years across the universe. It's like cosmic archaeology. It really is. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the data points to the formation of the smallest black hole ever observed. It's a remarkable discovery in its own right. You know, thinking about atoms forming billions of years ago and black holes being born, it makes my Tuesday morning traffic jam seem a bit less significant. Yeah. <laughs> it really puts things in perspective. Yeah. It's a good reminder that we're part of something much bigger than ourselves, this cosmic story that's been unfolding for billions of years. And the atoms in our bodies, the gold in our jewelry, they're all products of that story. Speaking of gold, we talked about how strontium and yttrium were detected in this kilonova, which hints at, you know, the creation of these heavier elements. But what about other elements like gold, platinum, or even uranium? Were those created too? That's a great question. And while we can't say for certain based on just this one observation, there's a strong possibility that a whole spectrum of these heavy elements were forged in this cosmic furnace. What makes you think so? Well, remember that process of rapid neutron capture we talked about? Right. That's the key. Kilnova are incredibly rich in these neutrons, making them the perfect environment for heavier and heavier elements to form. As these atomic nuclei, they gobble up neutrons like cosmic Pac-Man. Okay, that makes sense. But if those elements are there, why can't we just see them directly? It really comes down to how easy or difficult it is to detect certain elements. Some, like strontium and yttrium, they emit light at wavelengths that are relatively easy for our telescopes to pick up, right? Right. Others might emit light at wavelengths that are harder to detect, or they might be obscured by these clouds of gas and dust. So it's not that those heavier elements aren't there, it's just that we might not have the tools to see them yet. Exactly. But as our telescopes become more powerful, our instruments become more sensitive, we're getting better and better at detecting those fainter signals and unveiling the full complexity of these events. Makes you wonder what other secrets are, like hidden in the light that's reaching us from across the universe. Oh, well, there's always something new to discover, which is what makes astronomy so exciting. Each new observation, it brings us closer to understanding the grand narrative of the cosmos. Well, you've certainly given us a lot to think about today, but before we wrap up, I have one more question. If neutron star collisions are these cosmic forges for heavy elements, and this particular one resulted in like the smallest black hole we've ever observed, does that mean black holes might be involved in element creation too? That's a really intriguing question, and one that scientists are actually actively exploring. While black holes don't directly create elements in the same way that Kilanovi do, their immense gravity, it can influence the material around them, potentially setting the stage for element formation. So it's like black holes are the cosmic conductors, right? Yeah. Orchestrating the creation of elements from a distance. That's an interesting way to think about it. 
Black holes definitely play a role in this grand cosmic drama, even if we're still unraveling all the details. You know, it's incredible to think about how something as, like, seemingly destructive as a black hole could potentially be involved in the creation of the very elements that make up our world. Yeah, the universe is full of surprises, isn't it? Yeah. It's a constant reminder that there's there's always more to learn and discover out there. Well, you've certainly taken us on an incredible journey today from the the fiery collision of neutron stars to the birth of a black hole, the creation of these heavy elements. I feel like we've barely scratched the surface. Well, it's been a pleasure sharing this this cosmic tale with you. And you're right, you know, this is just the beginning. Every new observation, every piece of data we gather, it brings us closer to understanding this, this grand symphony of the universe. So let's uh, recap some of the key takeaways for our listeners today. Sure. We started with this mind-blowing event, two neutron stars, the remnants of these collapsed stars crashing into each other with like unimaginable force. And from that cosmic inferno, we saw the birth of not only a spectacular kilonova, but also the smallest black hole we've ever observed. And what's truly fascinating is that this kilonova, it wasn't just an explosion, it was a crucible. Right. A cosmic forge where heavy elements were created through this rapid fire process of neutron capture. Yeah. And we even got to witness this sort of time delay you know, a glimpse into the past, thanks to the vastness of the kilonova and the speed of light. Right. It's as if we were actually watching the formation of atoms unfold, like in slow motion billions of years ago. It's mind boggling to think that the elements that make up everything we see and touch, from the gold in our jewelry to the iron in our blood, <laughs> you know, could have been born in a fiery event like this. Yeah. We are quite literally stardust. We are. And it really highlights the interconnectedness of of everything in the universe, from the smallest atom to the most massive black hole, we're all part of the same grand cosmic story. And that brings us to our final thought-provoking question for our listeners today. Okay, shoot. When you look up at the night sky, do you ever think about where those twinkling stars, you know, came from and what they might become? Perhaps some of those stars have already met their end, their remnants scattered across the universe as atoms that eventually found their way to our planet, to our very bodies. It's a humbling thought, isn't it? It certainly is. <laughs> so the next time you gaze up at the cosmos, remember that you're not just looking at these distant stars, but at the echoes of these ancient events that shaped the very fabric of our existence. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep wondering. The universe is full of mysteries just waiting to be uncovered, uh, 